Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is Roy Evans of the Jericho Broadcast Networks, and I am here with Mr. Darren Reed, who is the Senior Vice President of Stride Professional Development. Darren, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Roy. Glad to be here. All right. Well, thanks. So let's start off by telling the folks a little bit about what Stride Professional Development is. Yeah, absolutely. Stride uh, is a is the nation's leading uh provider of online education in the K through 12 space. We were formerly known as K-12 Inc. And uh, are, you know, over two decades in the space of providing um, free virtual online education across the nation to students, no matter where they are. Um, we've since changed our name to Stride uh, because we're, we, we've done expanded beyond the K-12 space, though, though that's still very much what we do as a priority. Um, what we've also done with the Stride Professional Development Center is we've leveraged some of our expertise over the past two plus decades of supporting schools and students and educators, teachers, principals. Um, and we are trying to innovate, you know, the way professional development happens for educators. And that we're doing that through the Stride Professional Development Center. Um, gone are the days where, you know, it's face-to-face -face only PD. Um, it's episodic professional development. Um, it's professional development that's not necessarily relevant to what teachers and educators need right away. So the Professional Development Center is designed to solve that challenge with some unique and uh, innovative uh, ways of delivering content. All right, man. Well, listen, we are super excited here at the network to be engaged with you all and helping to provide this opportunity for teachers all across the country, and especially those teachers that are coming from our HBCU backgrounds, because we Absolutely. know that education was always one of the stalwarts of most HBCUs in this country. They all had teaching programs, and that's what a lot of them were founded for. So there, let's talk absolutely. a little bit about those special programs that you guys have for yeah. the teacher. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, Roy, you hit, you hit on the very important point. Um, you know, right now in our country, we're facing, facing probably one of the greatest challenges, you know, of our teaching core that we have in many, many years, and that, that's around this teacher shortage. You know, a lot of teachers are exiting the profession, um, um, just just based on tenure, you know, they're they're retiring and moving on, and then you have, you know, our existing teachers who are who are being taxed and stressed, you know, particularly post COVID, with, you know, increasing demands, um, challenges that they're facing in the classroom, and a host of other other uh, issues that, that they struggle with, and um, we need good teachers, and we need to support the teachers that we have. So the two things that we're doing. Um, is that we know first year teachers among all teachers are among the first to leave the profession uh, within the first five years. I think they do um, at, at a 44% rate, which is just scary to think that folks are, you know, graduated, want to go in a classroom and make a difference, but, you know, feel like they need to leave within the first five years because it's so challenging. So we want to support them. Um, obviously, as a new teacher, your school that you, you, you work with, where you work your first year, the district where you work, there will be some professional development support to assist you. But we want to go a step further. We want to help every teacher in the country get off to a strong start uh, to their first year and have some uh, stick to it in this, you know, to help them get through that first year. So we're offering a year free um, access to the Stride Professional Development Center. It's a ever growing online database of courses that will help them in a variety of different ways. Uh, classroom management, targeted instruction, uh, and, and a host of other things. And the content will continuously grow. Again, it's just another resource that allows them to sharpen their practice, to feel like they're supported, uh, because the research says that teachers are leaving in large part because they don't feel like they get enough professional support. So we really hope that helps new teachers. So again, this is for any new teacher who just graduated in the country. All you have to do is go to our site and uh, sign on using the Teachers Win uh, uh, discount at, at, at checkout. Also, we have a, a, another campaign where during Teacher Appreciate Teacher Appreciation Week, we gifted uh, all teachers in the country, no matter where you are, six months free professional development center access. Uh, but we're doing a special thing with through you, our partnership with the B, BCSN and our, our uh, HBCU graduates, and, and also the schools that you work with. We want any teacher in the country who, 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 you know, through our partnership, um, gets access to the Professional Development Center, and they get six months free using the BCSN 23 uh, passcode at, at checkout. You know, again, our goal is to support and get as many teachers on the site feeling supported, um, you know, to really help, you know, them, them succeed and have some success, not only for them, but obviously for our kids and the communities they serve, so. 
Most definitely. And Darren, listen, we are super excited again to be a part of this. My mother was a teacher. My aunt was a teacher. I have my my best friend is a teacher. Absolutely. So we understand. I've worked in the school system for years. So I understand the resources that are needed. I understand why a lot of these teachers do take the time and they sit there. And after going through college, they're like, you know what? Let's do something different. Yeah. So we're happy to be a part of this to help you guys change that. So ladies and gentlemen, here's all you guys need to do. All you need to do is take a look and go to the link that's right below us right now and see what you're going to do. You're going to see two links on the page now, just to make sure. The top one takes you to their professional development page, homepage, that'll let you know about some of the things that are happening there and the things that you have access to. Go to the second link that says teacher appreciation. That'll take you directly to the content page where you can sign up and get your free year if you're a new teacher and your free six months if you're an existing teacher. Let's show them how we utilize resources and we make sure that we take time for those folks who are HBCU alum and use this. And let's see what Stride has to offer. We're excited about it. We know you will be too. Darren, is there anything else that you'd like to say to the folks? No, I mean, just, you know, as a teacher myself, you know, and and um, understanding the need. Um, and, and of course, with the, you know, the, the diversity that's needed in our teaching core across the country, you know, I know our HBCU teacher graduates are just, uh, exactly what we need in our community. So I really encourage them and just glad to be doing this partnership with you all. All right. Well, folks, there you go again, Mr. Darren Reed, Senior Vice President of Stride Professional Development Learning. We will be seeing you guys, and trust me, you'll be seeing more from their partnership with us as we move forward, always trying to do our best to make sure that we move forward with the community. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouse. But if they won, she tap. I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes, sir. and pay attention, Boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Hey Charles, how's it going? Doing well, Don, doing well. I mean, we it is... Uh, time to get into it now. We got a bevy of games and uh, a lot of stuff going on this upcoming weekend. Looking forward to it. That's right. This is Dr. Bill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Welcome to episode 424 Inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast. The show that's covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBCU sports from institutions large and small from the NEIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBC sports culture. HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. We just call it the HBCU sports pedagogy. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Charles, we had Mike, man. We just had him this weekend. <laughs> we we had him. In a- back in, we do a surprise. We can understand. You know, we kind of got on the road. Uh, we made it happen for the press conference Labor Day. Uh, but now showtime. First week zero, week one. Perfect time to week take zero. A, perfect time to take a vacation. Out on the side. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. Yes, I, indeed. I, me, I wasn't sure. So man, is the Cabo somewhere? I don't know. Else or what? I, let, let me be quiet. Yeah, because he's gonna turn in a sick note now. I'll be like, this is uh, never mind. <laughs> Filming from our home studios and sending a signal out takes away to our 30 a.m. studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. Well, we started off with week zero, got a game in there, had a couple of HBCU playing. You had Florida Memorial, got off the ground, you had Langston. Uh, both of them at the NIA level, but then you had the major game. You had Swag Challenge. We got to talk about it a little bit yesterday. 
Um, but let me just jump in here. I like what HBCU game they did with Jackson State dominated South Carolina State. I think that was appropriate title for this. Three takeaways. Mm-hmm. You know, after um, Jackson State got it done, 37 to 7, with a late score for South Carolina State for pretty much the game, they shut them out. Uh, first half, I'm not sure if they crossed the 50 yard line to be um, give you mm-hmm. some indication of what was taken care of there. And the score could have been a little more worse than it was with a missed field goal, you know, fumble as they were going in for a drive and things of that nature. But it didn't look like Jackson State had any drop off for 2022 under T.C. Taylor, the new head coach of the program. Obviously, Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, has departed. He moved on. But Jackson State still has high expectations with its fans. Some may see even higher because they want to get that national championship well, they started off in the right way, I will say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason Brown, the new quarterback, transfer that came in there, seemed to really do his part, handled the game well, um, did it, read his keys as assignment, uh, had uh, the ability they put up for 500 yards. Defense held South Carolina State to just a total over 200 yards. Um, and then the third thing, it looks like South Carolina State – has a lot to figure out. I would agree with that in terms of Stephen Gaither and what you saw in the write-up for HBCU game day. Let me get your perspective in terms of what you saw Saturday night, late night. Uh, you t- I think they checked all the boxes, uh, from offense, defense, special teams. Uh, I talked with uh, a lot of uh, you know people uh, who've been following Jackson State for a long time, and I think one of the things that really jumped out for us was, you know, the, the, the two tight end personnel. I mean, it's been a while mm-hmm. since we've seen uh, Jackson state with sort of these power packages, if you will. Uh, they had there were multiple occasions. They had two and three tight ends in the games. And I can't remember the last time two different tight ends called touchdowns in the Jackson state game, uh, much like we had this past uh, weekend. But I think that was a huge win. Uh, another takeaway that I had was I think it was a, a, a huge win for Jackson State's fan base. Uh, I think to psychologically move forward uh, into the 2023 season uh, with this team and a lot of questions were answered because I think there were just a lot of unknowns going into this game. Man, I have a great appreciation for what you just broke down there. Um, makes a lot of sense in terms of just the different ways that you look at and avenues that you speak of. Tight end has seemed to be in a lost art in the college mm. game. So the fact that he threw it in there is not just <laughs> Jackson State. Uh, but it was a nice wrinkle. It's certainly one that woke work this past weekend. So good stuff. Let me give a shout out, and then I'll come back to you and see what your thoughts are on some uh, news of the day that you wanted to get out here. But I wanted to give our lab listeners, as we open things up in week one, it seems like a lot of folks are jumping on here, a lot of folks are excited. So I want to give some love to the people and make us do what we do. Jeff Roberts, Chuck Hunt, Ron Waters. Chuck Hunt says, checking in from Monroe, Louisiana. Good evening. Ron Waters says, hey, guys, uh, as he's representing over there in Florida, Bethune-Cookman, chiming in from not-so-sunny Orlando, Florida. Yes, be careful over there. Sarah Beverly, Garland Dunlap, uh, as she says, appropriately, stay safe. Jeff Roberts, make sure they know, hashtag Aggie Pride. Big game this weekend, mm. Silas McMorris, um, Amos, Fawcett. What's up, guys? Game week, a They look like they're ready. They're here deep. LaShawn Harris, Mary Allen says, hello, everyone in the HBCU land. Edwin D. Moore, G. Boom Holly. Good evening, Lab Rats, as he likes to say. Carol Keelum, Jerry Johnson, Ricky Burton, Jazz D. You know uh, in the building. Michael Ford, Kofi Woodall. Willie Alex Hine. What else we have here? See Michael Ford getting in the building. Appreciate you all as y'all uh, chiming in. And I agree with you for those in Florida. Stay safe. It'll be fascinating. We have a couple of games. We'll see if this has any impact. We'll get in a little bit about that, about those games in Florida. Obviously the big one. And we'll talk about it later in the show. Jackson State and FAMU. You also have another rivalry game down there that features NIA, NCAA Division II now with Edward Waters, Florida Memorial in terms of those programs. We understand what took place in Jacksonville. So prayers for everybody in that community. Obviously devastating to continue to hear um, what we understand, particularly where it's uh, hitting home. 
obviously we've heard too many times about call-ins for bombing at HBCUs, and now you actually have somebody that went to an HBCU campus. Um, with much support uh, to the staff there that took care of things, but then we find out that while it did not directly affect HBCU students, faculty, administrators, that just down the street, that we lost three people in their lives. To and Doc, Doc, Doc I do want to say, have a moment of silence for that. Yeah, and I yes. do want to, I do want to hail that security guard uh, as a hero because he uh, thwarted what could have been an even larger tragedy uh, in terms of, uh, you know, being on top of his job. So. Uh, to whomever that person is, kudos go out to you. Yeah, I saw an interview with him yesterday as a young man. Um, he did not consider himself a hero, but I agree with you that um, he took his job serious to another level and for mm -hmm. what could be and, and what we now seen it could have been much worse. Also, kudos to the students, you know, um, in terms of reporting to authorities and Cause to them seeing something that concerned them that just wasn't normal. And the fact that a lot of times that they could have just moved forward and, and not dealt with the issue. So the fact that they got in front of this, uh, kudos to the president out there at Edward Waters in regards to what he continues to build and the seriousness that he took this and how he got in front of it and taking care of students. So um, you're right. A lot of folks, uh, we appreciate that. Before I go back to you for some other news and maybe some more thoughts that you want to share, because certainly wanted to make sure you get that in there because great points that need to be said. Chad Cooper, Brian got the airs in the building. Uh, HBCU Heritage Center is always uh, making sure that he is in here taking care of us. But that being said, let me go back to you, get your thoughts in terms of some news of the day. Yeah, and I know we're going to dive into this just a little bit, but uh, the BXY Challenge draws near 1 million viewers on ABC uh, this past weekend. So this is per Sports Media Watch. Uh, the Jackson State 37-7 win over South Carolina State drew an average of 922,000 viewers, which was a .57 TV rating on the ABC. So only Notre Dame uh, versus Navy, which was played on NBC earlier in the day, received a higher TV rating. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff when you talk about the night game. And this was the fact that it wasn't necessarily aired in every market. And some of that was out of control with some negotiations going on throughout the landscape. Uh, but to hear that is certainly good news in terms of what that looks like. The Act football schedule 2023 is officially revealed across the board. The MEAC has announced its football schedule for 2023 and across ESPN platforms, including games on linear networks. ABC and ESPN, ESPN Plus. Obviously, we know it kicked off with the week zero, the x Sweat Challenge. We talked about that a little earlier. It ends with the Cricket Celebration Bowl in uh, December, that Saturday, uh, December 16th. Uh, the conference is 52 regular season games. MEAC teams are slated to make 45 appearances on televised or stream games. That's 87% of the schedule. The egg teams will be featured on seven national televised games on ESPNU. In addition, all conference matchups will be streamed live on ES, along with 15 non-conference games hosted at MEAC member institute. ESPNU Game of the Week begins on Saturday, October the 21st. Really gets interesting. You said this, Charles, when you talk about this uh, in regards to um, – the five game stint for the MIAC. It's like a mini playoffs. Like you <laughs> yeah. just can't afford much slips up in that. Uh, you also have wild card matchups to be announced no later than Monday, October the 9th. Uh, and that's when you get into the point when you talk about wild cards, that's when they get to flex based on some of the games there. So uh, a pair of conference games to be aired on ESPNU on Thursday night with previous feature North Carolina Central. And Morgan State on October 19th, South Carolina State on North Carolina Central October 26th. Both games will be kickoff live at 7.30 uh, Eastern Time, 6.30 Central Time. With that, we'll take our first break, come back on the other side, and get into some more HBCU talk. We got some big games this week, Charles. You ready? We got some big ones. I'm ready. Let's go. All right. Let's get into it. We'll be right back after this break. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. 
Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love ya, yeah. and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, sir. and pay attention, yes, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. We have none other than Coach Shotgun, Willie Shotgun Simmons, as I've known him. Uh, Coach Simmons, head coach of the FAMU Rallies. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Just uh, preparing for the storm, but other than that, man, we're doing well. Yeah, I know. You always find a way that you seem to have the, the storms come your way to open the season. Uh, we got to find a way to get that out. Away. Well, you know, it's Florida. So it's, it's three seasons in Florida. It's, it's spring football season, fall football season, and hurricane season. So uh, <laughs> it just happens to all run together sometimes. But uh, we, we expect that every year we're going to get probably at least one. And, um, you know, this one here, obviously, depending on the path, can, uh, can you know, have a little bit of damage. But uh, we're all prepared and, um, you know, been through a lot of them. The one out there in Houston was probably the worst one I've been a part of. So, but I was at home with the little ones and don't try to get them organized. Hey, take your system. No problem. <laughs> take time. We yes, got We've been there. I, I got my I got my hands pulled this past weekend, and I got to get him to the game. He just started school, so he's really excited. I didn't train a little bit of television. I didn't know what that means. Now he think he can star. <laughs> That's right. Yes, it did. <laughs> Hold on, man. This 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 me. With that being said, before we get into these X and O's quickly, I just had I just have to know. Houston Stakes or Miami Stakes? Houston Stakes or Miami yeah, Stakes? Yeah, as a state. You know what? You steak. I, I haven't really eaten a steak in Miami other than the ones that we get at the hotel. And I, Well, you know, no, that's not true. I ate one at Shoeless. So, man, that's a tough one. Um, I've had a lot of steaks in Houston, though. So, just by <laughs> sheer quantity – um, you know, it, Texas is the beef state, and and so yeah, uh, I, go, got, go. I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to go to Houston. I got to go to Houston on that one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> indeed. Now you had me nervous there for a minute, Coach. I thought I gonna have to go find me some new state places. I thought. I I, well, I said that so you can treat me next time I come. <laughs> <laughs> I do 
knew it was a trip. I knew it was a, a trick in I was, there I was waiting on Let's it somewhere. In. <laughs> yeah, you knew he was going to slide it in there somewhere. <laughs> Coach, uh, how do you feel about this week getting into the game? Yeah, we're excited. You know, it's a great opportunity. Uh, start of football season. You know, I, I feel really good about this team. We've had a great training camp. Uh, I really like how the team has come together. And uh, just excited to be able to show everyone what we feel is the best team that we've fielded since we've been here. Um, we feel like we have all the key ingredients. You know, the quarterback play is always critical. Uh, I feel like we're really strong on defense, uh, really sound and solid on special teams. Uh, and then we we, th we feel like we shored up the, the weakness that we had last year, which was the run game. You know, so between the running backs we signed in the transfer portal and the offensive linemen that we brought in, along with the growth and development of the ones that are returning, that were returning, uh, we feel we'll be able to run the ball effectively. So, again, I, I think we have the makings of a really good team. Obviously, that's on paper. And we have to get on the field and do it. But uh, I, I, don't, I don't think I've been this excited about a team in a long time. Charles, you want to follow? Yeah, I, you know, I, I want to ask this, uh, Coach, in terms of when you watched Jackson State this past weekend, were there any surprises? I mean, what 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 were your expectations in terms of watching them this past weekend? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I really think I had expectations. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really wanted to watch the game as a fan of college football, a fan of black college football, uh, and then, you know, to do a little bit of early scouting. Um, I knew they'd come out and play hard. You know, obviously, whenever you have a head coach who played at the school, uh, who was a really good player at the school and who's been a part of winning teams and cultures there, uh, you don't expect a huge drop off. You know, so I knew that the team would come out and play hard. Um, TC has been around the game a long time. You know, this isn't his first rodeo, his first head coaching job, but it's not his first rodeo. And so I wasn't surprised that they played hard, that they played with a lot of passion. Um, a lot of energy, you know, again, didn't didn't really know what they were going to do offensively or defensively. So to see them push the tempo the way they did um, was something that kind of caught me off guard. Um, you know, so that's obviously something you got to prepare for. But I, I probably was more surprised at how they handled South Carolina State. You know, obviously going up against those guys during our time in the MEAC, uh, it was always a tough, uh, hard-nosed game. And uh, those guys really play hard. So to see Jackson handle them the way they did really opened a lot of eyes. But not surprising the least bit that that they that they showed that they're a really good football team. And I think you kind of touched on it a little bit, but uh, just in terms of, I guess in the, in your recruiting, uh, do you feel as though the gaps that you saw on your team last year you you've addressed that, especially going into this game, which you know a lot of people point to could be for supremacy of the. Yeah, you know, obviously every year you go in and you assess um, where you are. You assess the, the, the attrition that you'll have, whether it be through graduation or now because of the nature of, of, uh, of the landscape of collegiate athletics, the transfer portal. You know, yeah. back in the old days, you only had to worry about guys graduating. Now you have to worry about them transferring out as well. So, um, you know, we we knew we were losing some really good players in Isaiah Land, Xavier Smith, uh, Chris Fadul, Jose Roma Martinez. Uh, a lot of guys that played a lot of snaps for us, we knew we were losing. Uh, but then you lose a Kamar Stevens in the transfer portal. And so, you know, we really wanted to make sure that we, we showed up our defensive line. And so we were able to go out and get uh, four, the, I think five or six transfer defensive linemen uh, that have come from a, a myriad of places. You got FBS transfers, some FCS transfers, uh, just to build some quality depth along the lines. But the main issue we wanted to address, again, was was the running game. And so – bringing in a Cardell Thomas um, on the offensive line, uh, Ashton Grable, um, Yannick Ogunlade, and then signing Jacquez Yant and Kevin Dean at running back, uh, we feel uh, definitely strengthen our run game. And if, if our run game can complement uh, the, 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 the level of passing that we are capable of doing, I, I think it'll make us a really, really balanced offense and, and make, us, make us hard to defend. Sure. Coach, with your um, experience both in the MEAC previously, before that SWAC, going back and forth, I remember a couple of chances we got to interview you um, looking at those matches between MEAC and SWAC. And there was some conversation about how the MEAC uh, was physical. Uh, do you see that the SWAC has maybe made the turn in terms of getting physical, more physical uh, in, in terms of the conference play itself? and due to those matchups to make sure they can match up in those type of games? Well, yeah, I think what you see is the, um, the advent of the transfer portal really helping mm. the Southwestern Athletic Conference. 
um, you know, for a long time, I think when 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 SWAT schools had to recruit from the high school and junior college ranks, typically it's hard to get developed offensive linemen. Uh, when you're mm. an eighteen year old, or even going into junior college ranks, where you're getting a guy who, um, you know, hasn't been in a four year college or has has the type of resources that that those guys need. Whereas in the Northeast, they just grow a little bit bigger, right? It's indoors; they, they're just bigger coming out of high school. So um, you were able to get a little bit more physical. Uh, and plus the nature of ball that you have to play up in that region when it gets cold in late October, November, mm -hmm. uh, you better be able to run the football, whereas it's, it's still warm in the south, so you still can play basketball on grass. But now with the transfer portal, you look at the footprint of the SWAC. Well, where is it? It's right, in the, it's right in the heart of the SEC in the Big 12. And so now you look at the transfers, a lot of those guys are coming from SEC programs. They're coming from Big 12 programs. And so we're able to get – bigger offensive linemen, defensive linemen, tight ends, linebackers, those positions that were really hard to recruit coming out of high school and junior college before the transfer portal, now we're able to get them. And so I think you see the SWAT becoming a much more physical league, and uh, I think you saw a lot of that this past Saturday. Good stuff. I know, obviously, um, with the matchups between FAMU and Jackson in the last couple of years, TC being on the staff, previous stints, have you had a chance to coach against TC? Uh, in terms of uh, him being on the staff, with one of the matchups you had in the past. Well, we he was the offensive coordinator um, at North Carolina Central. Uh, we played them back in, in 2018, and so you know, familiar with them. I've known TC for a while, and uh, obviously he was on the staff at Jackson the last two years. So this this isn't our first time going up against one another. Obviously, it will be our first time as head coaches going toe to toe. Um, but again, the utmost respect for TC. You know, he's earned it. Uh, he, he's, he's done his time. Um, you know, he's been around some great programs, great coaches, and you see him putting his own footprint on that program. And that's what you want to see. So again, fully expect the heavyweight fight, two really good football teams going toe to toe and, um, you know, the team that, that prepares the best and the team that, uh, doesn't do the things to beat themselves. Uh, I, I think we have the best chance to come out victorious on Sunday. Man, that coaching speak is good. I, I like it. <laughs> no bullet to board material this week. With that being said. I, you know, and when you asked the question, I said, well, Kavir trying to be messy. He's trying to be messy. He's trying to be messy. I ain't going to do it. I was just, I was just curious. I was, I was just curious. I was just curious. That's my, my job to ask the questions. You get to answer them the way you feel like it. I like it, Coach. With that, that being said, when you go to look at the film, I know obviously a lot out of the things you want to focus on your team and executing, doing the things that you want to get done in the game plan that you put together. But on the other side, you do watch film in regards to the team. How far do you go back uh, when you're filming TC? Obviously, the coordinators are new. How do you go about putting together game film to try to figure out some things? Obviously, you might get a little more help because they did play in week zero. Can you talk a little bit about that process just to educate our fans? Yeah, you know, that's the tricky thing about college football. Um, this is the only sport, to my mm -hmm. knowledge, where there's no preseason. Mm -hmm. And so every other sport, you get a chance to play exhibition mm -hmm. games, preseason games, to, to be able to get some type of idea uh, of what the team looks like. Um, in college football, <clears throat> college football is right out of the gate. And so a lot of times, you know, you have head coaching changes, coordinator changes. Uh, you're just basing it off the information that you can that you can gather where they were before, um, and again, if they weren't a play caller, you may, you got a situation there at Jackson where uh, the defensive coordinator didn't call plays last year. And so he was at Alcorn State as a defensive line coach. So do you study Alcorn State's defense and try to assume he's going to bring a lot of that with him to Jackson? Do you look at his tree from previous stops and try to start piecing it together to see what his philosophy is? You just kind of really you, you got to kind of go with your gut. And so the biggest thing early in the season, I think, is, is you focusing on your execution. Just making sure that you're sound in your, in, in your rules uh, up front on the offensive line, you know, in the back end, coverage-wise, making sure that, you know, you're able to, to to cover as many things as you can. You never have all the answers to the test until you get about three or four games in. And so you just try to do the best job you can to make sure that you're not, again, putting yourself in a bad position. But that's, that's one of the interesting things about college football, that every game matters. And you're coming right out of the gate with the game with no prior prep, uh, no ability to study film, and you just you just hope for the best. Man, appreciate it. That is so true. Uh, great point when you talk about that. Um, let me let Charles squeeze in this last one before we go to the break. 
Yeah, and, and real quick, uh, in terms of Jeremy Moose uh, comes in, swag preseason offensive player of the year, but uh, what is the progression that you've seen uh, from him from 2022 uh, through camp? Yeah, I mean, we we haven't mentioned any words about it or you know, been bashful about it. This is Jeremy's first time since high school that he'll have the same play call for two years in a row. And so mm. you know, just the ability to be engulfed in the system more than one year, uh, it, it shows. It shows in his maturation. It shows in his processing of information, how he looks at the game now, uh, starting to see it from my lens. So the conversations that we have, uh, head coach or, or play caller to, to quarterback, are more in line with what you would want to see from a veteran guy. He asks good questions. You know, he challenges the way we read things or the progressions or even the routes themselves. And we've tweaked or changed some things because he came in with a suggestion and said, Coach, because of the way I read it and progress it, why don't we change it to this? This route's getting here too fast or it's not getting here quickly enough. So can we change the depth? Can we change the route? And once I had a chance to think about it, I said, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because you want to cater your offense to the guy that's pulling the trigger. So just to see him take that that role as the unquestioned leader of this football team, challenging the receivers, the O-line, the offense, even the defense every day, uh, it really, really makes you proud as a coach to see a guy uh, take the bull by the horn. Because, uh, again, you don't get leaders like that in today's climate. You know, a lot of guys sure. are about being liked, uh, about how people feel about them. You know, Jeremy doesn't mind guy joking on him because he has that California accent <laughs> in mind, you know, them getting in their feelings because he's holding them accountable and getting on them. He's doing the best job he can to make sure that his last year uh, is one that he'll remember forever. Sure. Thank you, Coach. I know you have a busy schedule. We'll make sure you uh, get back to your schedule of things, but I appreciate you getting in those X and O's and give us some insight uh, in terms of the film and coaching philosophy. It's a great opportunity. Excited about this matchup and can't wait to uh, check it out on television. Good luck this weekend and for Roy, Brian, and AD. Go Rattlers. <laughs> you didn't add Charles to that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and do it one time, Charles. It feels good. Just one time. Just, just take two fingers. Like it. it feels real good. <laughs> Appreciate you guys, man. Look, look Appreciate you, Coach. <laughs> Appreciate you, Coach. Have a good one. Thanks. We'll be right back after this break. You see, Head & Shoulders has scalp shield technology, protects against flakes even between washes. It's never not working. Kind of like us. We're never not working. Number 15? That's my rub. Ooh, nice. Never not working. Never, ever, never, ever not working. Welcome, everybody, to Juneau, Alaska. I don't like this one. Me neither. Let's get out of here. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. T. Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University Sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU Athletics, there's only one place to go. 
Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. When it comes to professional learning, teachers deserve better. From the leader in online learning, Stride brings you the Stride Professional Development Center, an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that gives teachers choice and flexibility, allowing them to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. It's time you take charge of your learning. Visit us today to get started. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, sir. and pay attention, Boy, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. This is Dr. Bill inside the HBC Sports Labs. We have the coaches of the hour between this big matchup, Coach T.C. Taylor, Coach Willie Simmons. Coach T.C. Taylor, let me talk to you first and ask you about this matchup. What are your thoughts in terms of playing a conference game uh, that counts opening up the season, essentially? Uh, I think it's a tough test for our football team early on in the season. Uh, it's all marbles on everything, all chips in, all everything on the line with a, a football game of this magnitude. Uh, going against a great football team that was picked to win the, uh, you know, the East Division. Uh, what ten All Conference guys got the best offensive player in the conference right now, preseason All Conference Player of the Year. So I mean, shoot, if you, I, I, I'm gonna say it like this: the, the right place to be this Sunday is in Miami. You know, it's going to be a good, it'll be a good place for a lot of fans to show up and be there and show support for both programs. But it's going to be a good football game on both sides of the ball. I know defensively they got, they got some guys that can really fly around um, some depth back depth on the defensive line. And in the secondary, a, 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 co a couple of great linebackers up in there that can really strike. So I'm just looking forward to it. And, you know, another big weekend uh, coming up um, this Sunday on ESPN. Mm -hmm. Coach Simmons, let me go to you in regards to you. You've been at this for a while in terms of having to open the season. I, I'm thinking that most of your coaching head coaching stint has been about playing a conference game to open up the season. Uh, other than last year with North Carolina, uh, you know, what are your thoughts in terms of having to deal with it? Yeah, I think y'all trying to run me out of the swag because every, <laughs> every year I've been the head coach in the swag, I've had to open the season with a conference game. So. I mean, it, it, it's it's definitely not for the weary. Um, but like TC said, man, it's 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 a tough outfit. Um, you know, not very often do you have two teams that are picked basically one and two um, the last three years in conference to start the season. You know, it, it, it's 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 good for fans. You know, it gives them something to look forward to early in the season. Uh, but it makes it really really tough uh, for football teams to know that you know you're, you're playing from behind basically after week one. You know, so I know a lot of conferences are kind of changing their models to where it's not necessarily divisional, that it's kind of going by the best records. And, and we've even talked about that as a, as, a, as head coaches in the league. Um, but, again, it makes it really, really difficult uh, to when you have, again, two, you know, again, I know people won't like it, but on paper the two best teams in the conference are playing week one. There are other teams playing in, in conference, but it's not counting, you know. And, and so I think it gives you a chance to play a really good game that, People want to see um, it's on national television, so neither one of us will turn down that opportunity. Uh, but it but it does really suck that one team will walk out of there zero and one, zero and one in conference, and, and basically be fighting for fighting from behind the rest of the season. Yeah, you're talking about essentially FCS two top twenty five teams, most HBCU polls. These teams are both top five, top three in a lot of cases. So not only you talking about the top in the conference, the top in the division, but you're talking about top. FCS programs, uh, whether it's HBCU or the entire SBS in itself. Charles, go ahead with a follow-up question um, before we take our next break. Yeah, and real quick, uh, because uh, this is such a uh, fascinating matchup, especially when you take a look at the sort of the, the roster breakdown for both teams on paper. You guys are so similar, but uh, it's the little intangibles. And I wanted to both of you guys kind of talk about uh, your strength and conditioning. Uh, uh, Jackson State, I was extremely impressed uh, with you guys in terms of the opening game uh, for you guys to look so fresh out there uh, and things of that nature. But I really wanted you to highlight uh, the work that you put in in this triple digit uh, weather. Yeah, I mean, that's a um, have to give a shout out to our strength coach, 
uh, Coach Beef over here, what he done with those guys throughout the summer. You know, we really uh, push things to the limit with these guys, having them here on campus in both sessions of summer school, uh, preparing for this uh, these types of games, this, this type of, uh, you know, these temperatures we're getting out here in the weather. And um, just pushing them and telling the guys, like I told them the other day, like uh, – <laughs> We'll be playing at what three o'clock come this weekend, so mm -hmm. we got to get out there and you know in the heat and um, get after it. But for the most part, it, it's the people behind the scenes, you know, the strength coaches, your trainers. Uh, we we preach hydration, you know, taking care of them off the football field, away from us, just uh, continuously deal uh, twenty four hours around the clock of trying to get them prepared. I mean. You want them to be in tip top shape and you work towards it, but until you get out there in it, it's the people that kind of can help them recover that what matters. You know what I mean? When I say that, uh, I don't care how <laughs> much of a good of a shape you're in, uh, 100 degrees is 100 degrees. Be out there toting pads and helmets and things like that on, and you, as coaches, uh, pushing them to the to the brinks of, of a ex exhaustion. It's your trainers that's what matters. It's the nutrition, um, the, the, the strength coach as far as getting them to recoup and get them ready for that next day. Coach Simmons? Yeah, I mean, you hit it spot on. Um, you know, two teams from the South. You know, it's, it's hot in Jackson, Mississippi. It's hot in Tallahassee, Florida. And uh, you try your best to acclimatize the guys, but at the same time, you got to be smart, right? You know, you, you go out there and you, you overexert them. Now you're losing guys for practices uh, and all those things. So like TC said, the, the, the nutrition, the, the rest, the, the hydration, uh, the treatment, you know, the, all those then behind the scenes people that never get credit. You know, the strength coach may get his, may be seen on the sideline because he's standing close to the, the head coach. You know, the training staff may be seen when somebody goes down and they go sprint out there. The equipment manager Holly's ever seen, you know, but all those people, the, the nutritionists, uh, all those people are critical. They're essential uh, for our success. You know, so again, we try to do our best to reward them and recognize them because uh, without them, we couldn't, we couldn't do that. You know, to be in Miami Gardens, We've been there two years in a row. It rained a little bit year one. Uh, then the sun came back out. Last year was a, was a cooker. And, you know, again, that stadium gets extremely hot. I expect nothing different this year. And, and like TC said, until you actually get out there and play in it, it's one thing to practice, one thing to scrimmage. But to be out there for 60 minutes in it is a totally different story. So, you know, their team has experienced it. Ours hasn't. And, uh, you know, hopefully that won't be a factor that, that puts us at a competitive disadvantage. We'll be right back after this next break. We'll see you on the other side. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillars of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At CDW, we get speed as the new currency of success. Our team spends way too much time tending to outdated applications and software when they should be focused on driving application agility and innovation. CDW Amplify Development Services modernizes software and application development to help accelerate accelerate innovation and digital transformation. So you mean building new applications, UI and mobile interfaces? Well, you said you needed to innovate more quickly. Oh, so he's a listener. To do more at scale, trust CDW Amplify Development Services. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Dr. Will, inside the HBC Sports Lab, yeah, the behind the scenes, boy, you should hear that talk behind the scenes. Shout out to Roy for making it happen, boy. Roy created his own contest, show. With that being said, <laughs> Dr. Will, inside the HBC Sports Lab, we have none other than the head football coach at Jack State University, T.C. Taylor, coming off his first win as the head coach against South Carolina State. I know you're tired of talking about that. It's time to move forward, but I did want to acknowledge the MEAC Swag Challenge champion. But let's get into the talk for this week as we turn the page in the chapter. Um, what are your thoughts about going into this matchup? Uh, uh, this game is for – it is this the, this the one. You know, we had the, the big one this past weekend, a kind of a revenge deal, wanted to get that for as far as what happened a couple years ago in the national championship game. But uh, 
we're telling our guys and we're preparing like this is a national, I mean, a SWAC championship type game. You know, and that's basically what it's been the last couple of years. You know, you look at the last couple of years, what's happening to the winner of the football of this football game has been basically going on to win the SWAC championship and had opportunity to play in the celebration bowl. But um, after going through that game last weekend, we got a, I feel like we got a very good football team. You know, I can honestly say that we got a very good football team. And I know a lot of those players that's coming back. I've seen them uh, last year and the uh, year before, a couple of them that uh, Coach Simmons has down there. So it's going to be some sparks flying down there in Miami come this weekend. Mm. I mean, you talking about two highly competitive, highly rated um, just teams. And, and the, the, the thing that I'm interested to see now, looking forward to the weekend, the team speed of both teams. I always, I'm, that's me. I, I'm a team speed guy. I just want to see the, the the competition for us, team speed, and how both teams are flying around out there. But it's going to be a magical weekend, you know, uh, come up coming this uh, Sunday on ESPN. You know, I'm the business side of this. So I just love the brand match between these institutions. I've had a great opportunity to work with both of you all as coaches mm -hmm. behind the scenes, seeing the maturation, the growth, and just the way that y'all think about the game of football. Mm -hmm. And you always don't get a chance to really put that on display. With that being said, how do you go in this game in terms of the analysis? Obviously you had a game, now you put some things on film. So, you know, tactically those things can kind of be analyzed. Mm -hmm. Where do you go when you start watching film of this team in terms of your next move. I know a lot of times it's about concentrating on yourself and doing what you want to do, but there's a chess match that is played yeah. that people don't always get a chance to talk to you coaches. If you would share a little bit of at least your mindset in terms of how you designate your coaches about how we're going to prep and get ready for this game, not psychologically, but in terms of the X's and O's. Well, it's a couple of things that come to mind. I always look at, you know, uh, even when I was a coordinator and position coach, I always looked at when I was going against any football team matchups, you know, the one-on-one -on -one battles, mm -hmm. you know, can this guy match up with this guy? If not, how do we help this player be great in this particular game in these four quarters? That comes with the scheme part of it. But if he's just a better player, he's a better player. We feel like we'll be fine there. And then the things that you like, for instance, we just played a football game. The things we weren't good at, I think that's a lot of times what they're looking at and things that they're going to attack. We weren't very good in red zone offense. We got to get better this week at that. Uh, we weren't very good. We could have been better tackling. We had a lot of missed tackles to me, or, you know, as far as what I saw out there. We got to be better at that. The turnovers made me sick to my stomach, you know. Uh, the, just putting the ball on the ground wasn't very good. So I know they're going to be, you know, trying to strip the ball away from us. Just things, little things like that. Third down, I feel like we can be better and improve on uh, going into this football game. So those are things I look at. You know, first thing first, I look at the one-on-one -on -one matchups. How do our players match up with this guy? How do our offensive line match up with their D-line or our receivers with their DBs, vice versa? And then try to figure out, you know, figure out ways to – help those guys be successful, help our players be successful. And then, you know, the things that we weren't good at. Mm. Charles, go ahead and follow up. You know, coach, you know, this Jackson state fan base extremely well. And I even had to reach out to uh, a hall of famer, uh, Sam Jefferson, in terms of mm -hmm. asking this question uh, in terms of, I don't think this fan base has seen uh, this type of roster overhaul. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think it did for the collective psyche of this Jackson State fan base to kind of transition from 2022 to 2023 and get this W this open week? Take a deep breath and know that, you know, we still playing good football here. It was a lot of people in Atlanta wasn't, might not have necessarily been coming to see us win the game, but they just needed to know, have some assurance that we got to still have a competitive football team. And I thought we went above and beyond and showed, you know, our players went above and beyond and basically showed that, you know, we could st still play football. That's where, you know, towards the fourth quarter, you could just feel the excitement, the energy in the stadium to say that we will have an opportunity if we just play great football, do the right things. We'll still have an opportunity to be playing in December, playing in a SWAC championship game. It was just so much doubt. And then that's it that the they don't know us for a lot of people. <laughs> You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They don't know us for a lot of people because I was so ready to just show our fan base, our team, you know what I mean? And just show, 
that you know everything's going to be okay. We're still going to get the most out of these uh, young athletes here, and they're going to play hard every football game, you know. And um, that's what I was so excited about for the fans, you know, to, just to finally put this football team on display and let them see that we, we, we're going to continue to have some success here at Jackson State. Follow up on that in terms of uh, somebody on display, uh, Jason Brown. Uh, yeah. And I made this I made this point. I, I, I thought it was going to be really hard, you know, to replace 40 touchdowns and six interceptions. But just talk about Jason in this opening game in terms of his process and of what you guys are trying to do on offense. Uh, well, the thing about Jason, Jason is an old dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I tell people. Like <laughs> Jason, I played a lot of football and I've seen a lot of different speeds of the game. You know, I've been around a lot mm. of great players, so I knew once the lights came on, you know, he was gonna kind of he he was gonna be what he was supposed to be. Um, we went out there and did a good job. I thought the running game was very important for him. We talked about that being able to run the football, and they, uh, we came out there and did that well. Er Mulligan, J.D. Morton had good, great games uh, on the other night, and um, it, it kind of allow Jason to settle in, you know, and be the guy that he we wanted him to be. And I thought um, he grew that night. You know, the team really saw, like, we're going to be okay with Jason Brown under center for us uh, going forward. And then, you know, the, the, the thing that I liked about him one time on the sideline, he basically called the guys up and said, um, we got to do better in this situation and, and the discipline. He talked to him about, you know, I think we was up pretty good and we kind of had things in control, but he was telling them basically, you know, let's not do nothing stupid. Let's not get baited into nothing. We need everybody for us next week. You just saw him come into his own and kind of settle in at that position for us. And my thing was, you know, Chuck, like, just don't go turn it over. <laughs> <That's what laughs> right. Like, give us a, give our defense a chance. Don't put them in no bad situations. And I'd always tell him to understand what's around you. That receiver room is very talented. There's still some guys out there that can make plays in that room that didn't even get, a, you know, opportunities to make the plays or didn't make the trip. You know, they, they're they really, really good football players. And I'm seriously, when I can seriously say that. So it was good to see Jason to go out there and establish himself. What it was, 22 straight completions at one point. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I had no clue that was going on. I'm serious. I'm sitting there watching the game. and had no clue that the kid had threw for 22 straight completions. That says enough in itself right there. So um, going forward, I, I just think he, he needed that game. I'm glad for this uh, program that it happened game one. Sure thing. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, that defense was incredible as well. With that being said, uh, the test of the day, the last question I have for you, stakes in Houston or stakes in Atlanta? Stinks in Houston or stinks in Atlanta? No, stakes, as in stakes that you eat steak. Oh, stakes. Oh, I thought you were going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, hey, <laughs> Oh, I'm a, man, Houston. <laughs> Houston, I mean, shoot, man. Houston got hey, it going I on. I got man. you. Next time you're down here, I got you. <laughs> you got, appreciate hey. you coming on there. Yes. I know you got a busy schedule and a lot of time. So I, I appreciate you taking out your valuable time. Game of the week for us. And so to get you both on uh, to talk about the matchup. Look forward to this. I'll be all eyes on for this matchup. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we continue the years, I'll find a way to get down there. Uh, to see some games. And I'll be in Jackson as well, see if I can follow up on Charles's train and get behind him. Maybe he'll give me a pass or two. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me say this, though. Um, to all the fans, and I, you know me, I'm a big HBCU guy, but to all the fans, some good football going on this week, man. Tune in. Tune yeah. in some really good games. You get the gauge. You got a lot of good HBCU football this week. Hey, support that, man, because it, it, this weekend right here, uh, you know, it, it's going to be truly epic, I think, this this open weekend with some of the matchups we got. And we're going to have a lot of questions answered, you know, come Monday. You know, Very after much this so. weekend. So, hey. Yeah, and we'll be here to talk it, about it. You. Hey, hit I'm me up. I'm glad you said it, Coach, because we got <laughs> it from the coach talking about <laughs> matchups, not just us. We didn't no. told you about this, and we're going to continue to give it to you. Thank you so much, Coach. Uh, we're going to take our next break. We'll be right back after that. Nope. Nope. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. Quick, the 
quicker picker upper bounty picks up messes quicker and each sheet is two times more absorbent so you can use less he's an eight he's a nine bounty the quicker picker upper that's a pretty tight spot watch this of course your beauty parks itself that's so you it's just up here on the right of course you know where we're going that's so you kind of got six cents and a head of display They're here. Hit the field, warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life. Because at the heart of every Buick SUV is you. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster. Absorbs even more so you can feel dry and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. Are you press the analytic data with your hip hop If you know them like I know them They gon' tell you if your team If they want a lot left And who the ball, who the ball So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, And pay attention boy. cause he gon' teach us this is Dr. Cavill inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Hope you heard it from the coaches in terms of one of our games of the week. That is that Orange Blossom Classic. You heard it from the two coaches as they prepare for this week. And it is a doozy. Turn in Sunday ESPN uh, as that matchup. I certainly will be watching it. Let's go and show some love for our mid-major programs. We got a top 20 matchups coming into the season. We'll only do the top seven after this, but as we get in this first week, we're doing top 21 matchups as we listed the top 21 major and mid-major programs. So with that being said, Columbia, South Carolina, Charlie W. Johnson Stadium, Carolina Class, SIC versus the CIAA. That's Saturday, September the 2nd, 5 p.m., and it is on HBCU Go. Number one, Benedict Tigers take on number 17, uh, Shaw Bears as they host them for that matchup there. We got another interesting game. This is a mid-major game versus a major game, but we're calling this our HBCU non-conference mid-major division game of the week. It's a bonus one for you. Durham, North Carolina, Old Kelly Riddick Stadium, Maroon and Gay, Maroon, Maroon and Gray game, I should say, CIAA versus MEAC Old Rivalry Saturday, September the 2nd at 3 p.m. Mid-major number 14, Winston-Salem State Rams travel to number one, North Carolina Central Eagles. Ooh. Ooh, matchup. This one could get ugly. I'm just saying. The one that I want you to look at, Charles, and talk about is Jacksonville, Florida. We just talked mm -hmm. about Jacksonville, so this is a big game in a lot of ways. But this is a rivalry, and this is the other rivalry game in the state of Florida between two private schools, now one NIA, the other one NCAA Division two. Uh, we have the first – HBCU of the state of Florida, Edward Waters, they'll be hosting Florida Memorial Lions, who come in 0-1. They lost their last matchup, a tough one, but they put up points, and they face number 13, Edward, uh, Edward Waters Tigers, Nathaniel Glover Community Field and Stadium, Big Cat Classic, Independent versus SIAC Saturday, September 2nd at 5 p.m. Central. Charles, what do you talk about this game? Well, it'll be interesting to see how both of these teams kind of prepare going into this game, especially uh, with that hurricane uh, coming through the state of Florida. And literally, when you take a look at the path, it, it looks as though it is going right along uh, the west coast of Florida and cutting across to Jacksonville. So uh, their preparation for this game is going to be uh, uh, key. Uh, you're talking about a Florida Memorial team that's coming off a heartbreak loss, uh, but I mean, offensively, they put up over 700 yards of offense. Uh, that's phenomenal. Uh, you take a look at it, uh, <laughs> 379 yards rushing as a team, six running backs uh, put up 379 Three. yards rushing. Uh, that was 400 uh, uh, yards rushing. Uh, 400 yards rushing. So, Elwood Waters defensive line, they're going to be tested tough uh, because it looks like Florida Memorial is a offensive juggernaut this season. Yeah, I agree with you right on the map. Play Bluefield, Virginia. That's not Bluefield State, the new one in the CIAA. This is a story at White College. They lost 50 to 47, as you alluded to. Uh, just points galore, yards galore. It'd be fascinating to see what takes place. Keep your eyes on that match. 
Let's transition to our major division games of the week. HBCU Classic uh, Game of the Week, we'll talk about that. We'll say that for last. It was the one that we had the coaches on to talk about this week. But let's go to our independent non-conference major division game of the week first. Harrison, New Jersey, Red Bull Stadium, Brick City Classic, Colonial Athletic Association, now known as the Coastal, which is a SWAT, Saturday, September 2nd, 2 p.m. Central Time, number 17, Hampton Pirates, uh, take on number 13, Grandma State Tigers. This is an interesting matchup. Uh, Hampton has had its way with HBCU FCS programs, but there's yeah. a lot of question marks about Hampton. They hadn't had a lot of else doing it. But let's go talk about the G-Man. It's a brand of HBCUs out there. But a lot of people want to know, is Bramlin going to take the next step? What do you say about this matchup, Charles? That is a million-dollar question. Can Bramlin take the next step? Historically, I've always said Bramlin does not stay down very long. But to your point, Dr. Cavill, Hampton has had their way uh, with uh, HBCU programs over the past few years. So this is a very interesting matchup. Uh, neutral field. So uh, we'll see if... Uh, if the, the brand, the national brand of Grandma uh, travels up to New Jersey, I'm sure Hampton will be in there uh, nice and deep. But this is going to be a fun matchup. And uh, I think for a lot of people, uh, Hugh Jackson kind of has to turn the, turn the corner a little bit with this Grandma program this upcoming season. So it's going to be real interesting to watch what this Grandma team puts out there. Uh, I know they had a few injuries last year, lost a running back along the way. It never was quite the same. It'll be interesting to see, can they get offensively back into the fold? And they do go into this game with the Swags preseason defense player of the year, uh, Sunday on the Anders. Yeah, if we're in Houston, we call it candy paint. You're talking about swinging and banging. Yeah, those Grandma yes. fans want to see the – Curve turning, and they want those wheels up high. We'll see if that is the case for the icon as they talk about grammar. We're talking about iconic. I just told you two of the biggest brands in the game, none other than Jackson State and Flam U, and they will be in Miami Gardens, Florida, Hard Rock Stadium, Orange Blossom Classics, SWAC, Eastern Division, Sunday, September 3rd, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, ESPN. Man, if I had my choice, I'd fly down there. But I got a pool party to attend to. I'll get my swim in early, get some barbecue, some good food and taste. Charles, you smiling because you're going to be there, right? There with uh, yeah, me. I will when be there. When it comes about 10 minutes to 2, we'll be on their couch. And we'll see number four, Jack State Tigers, 1-0, and versus number two, Florida a and Rattlers. I want everybody to know this was a preseason poll coming in there. So Jackson was at number four. We start the poll rankings next week. They already got one under their belt. Some people say they went higher than that. But I said top five matchup. I told you at number two, Florida a and Rattlers. Rattlers at home in the state of Florida, but Jackson State has owned them in Florida the last couple of years, really going back further than that. New head coach, T.C. Taylor, Coach Willie Simmons says he's ready to get off the side. He wants to trip to Atlanta. I asked him about stakes in Houston. I asked him about Miami. He says he wants to try the stakes in Atlanta with T.C. Taylor. Charles, <laughs> what do you say about this matchup? This is going to be an awesome matchup when you take a look at them, uh, especially with regards to the number of uh, transfers that have come in. Jackson State, roughly 29, Florida a m roughly 28, both 17 FBS transfers. You even take a look at the FCS transfers that have come into this program. They're both like 12 and 11, something to that effect. On paper, these teams look so similar. But I tell you what, like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Jackson State checked so many boxes last week, uh, and you just haven't seen FAMU. But you know that they have the probably the best gunslinger in the SWAC in Jeremy Musa going up against this Jackson State secondary that was ball hawking last week. Uh, this is a real true test for this Jackson State team because uh, if you're talking about you know a boxing analogy, they step up in weight class, taking on this spam you offense. So it'll be a fun one. Man, you talking about the one and old and rest in peace. He said the cooler side of the other side of the pillow, as he would say it back then. And you said it perfectly, boy. This is going to be a knockout. These two teams mirror each other in so many different ways. Um, and you go back two years ago, you saw the slugfest there and how that game went down to it. Jackson State jumped out and put it to him last year. I'm just going to be fascinated about this matchup. I can't wait to get into it. Uh, I just get to watch it and have all the fun and talk about it on Sunday 
as we debut the Sunday segment of Inside the HBC Sports Lab. We'll talk about it a little more. We'll see if we can bring in B.J. Jones. And we'll see if we can bring in Josh Sims Sr. as well to talk a little bit and give you a little more preview. We're going to wear you out in terms of this matchup. <laughs> we'll get the breakdown of what took place on Saturday, but we got it going on. We'll get past that. We'll give you some more shows and more insight on Thursday. But it's the new season. It's here, Charles. It's that time. With that being said, thank you for listening to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Niata Kabil, the Dean of HBCU Sports, coming from Inside the Lab in the College of HBCU Sports with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. He is Charles Bishop, the guru. He getting it done and gives you inside the numbers. Not quite like any other. He gave you some insights that you better think about. If you're going to put your money on this game, talking to Brian, you know, he likes to do all that with the magic <laughs> when you talk about with Las the, Vegas. With the, the old <laughs> Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Deville's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. I saw Brian with his head hanging down after that. He just knew he was going to make some money from Las Vegas with South Carolina say me, act like Charlie. I'm just saying, A.D. Drew tried to warn me, say, slow down, man. <laughs> With Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, every Tuesday and Thursday, come back here at 6 o'clock. Well, we look forward as we get into it Thursday. We got some more matchups, and hopefully we'll, we'll get you some more interviews with some coaches on next games of the week. We're changing it all up in the lab. We're going to bring them in there and get you all you need to know. Talk to some coaches as part of our game of the week. Check us out. Follow me, Dr. Yadikaville, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-A-C-A-V-I-L. Thank you for all the lab listeners inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Twitter, inside the HBC Sports Lab on YouTube and Facebook. Subscribe, like, make sure you get us in there. Green Big, continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles. Of course. Roy. Lecture. Dismissed.